All right, I'm going to say it. In 2025, solar panels, they've become overrated. They get all the love, all the attention, and to me, things need to change. Hey guys, it's Zach, and I've been in the solar industry for 10 years, and in the past, market conditions made the conversation 100% centered around solar panels and how much money you could save on your electric bill. And while those things are still very important, they aren't the most important factor to consider. The misnomer is that batteries and energy storage are just for planners, preppers, or for those who want to go off the grid. But that's really not the case anymore. So let's talk about it and see why so many homeowners are opting for a battery with their solar installation here in 2025. So let's start with grid reliance. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, we don't need a battery because we never get power outages yet. And I'm not trying to fear monger or make an issue out of nothing. But it's really not a big secret that we are trending towards an energy crisis. An obvious reason? Our infrastructure is old. I mean, most of the grid was built decades ago, and it's proving to be a critical point of failure. Extreme weather events like wildfires, winter storms, heat waves, hurricanes, and so on can expose these weak spots within our grid, and recent events across the U.S. like in Texas, California, and the Southeast show just how quickly people can be put in a tough spot without any notice. And with a huge surge of electrification occurring in our lives, mainly with EVs and data centers coming online, our power demand is growing exponentially. I mean, just to give you some context here, an average size data center requires as much power as tens of thousands of homes. What this means is now more and more homeowners are facing a higher risk of rating increases, which is obvious, but also blackouts, especially during peak seasons. But what does any of this have to do with batteries? During an outage, aren't solar panels enough? No. Remember this, a traditional solar installation will not operate during a power outage. You need a battery system. So if you have solar panels alone and the grid goes down, so does your system. And a lot of homeowners really don't like that limitation. Many consumers see the grid as proving to be more and more unreliable, and our trajectory supports that. So think of a battery system like a hedge against a potential outage, like an insurance policy. And the common piece of feedback that I hear is homeowners would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But to me, outage protection is really just a cherry on top. Side note as well, I know things can get frustrating when trying to get clear, honest information from a solar installer you can trust. So if you are curious whether solar and a battery would actually make sense for your home, book a zero pressure discovery call with me. It's completely free, takes just 15 minutes. That link can be found in the description below. The second big driver behind the rise in battery storage is the utilities themselves. They keep changing the rules and just like with any game, when the rules change, so does our strategy. At the heart of it, utilities are steadily devaluing the energy you send back to the grid. Because when you go solar, you typically enter a net metering or net billing agreement where you can buy and sell energy with the utility. In the past, many offered a one-to-one -one credit. You send them a kilowatt hour during the day and they credit you with a full kilowatt hour for later. And this exchange ratio made solar very flexible. You could export excess power when you didn't need it and then pull it back later when needed without losing value. But that's changing these full value value net metering plans will eventually be phased out and have been pretty much eliminated entirely in mature solar markets like Arizona, California, Texas, and Nevada. If you are in any of these states, I highly recommend booking that discovery call. Solar can be very beneficial here in these markets, but I still see so many installers and representatives who set the wrong expectation. Anyway, what's happening now is this full one-to-one -one net metering has been replaced with a wholesale buyback rate where excess solar energy sold back to the utility gets a credit worth just a fraction of its retail value. Utilities now treat homeowners more like small power suppliers, and since there's already a surplus of power generation during these peak solar hours, your exported energy just isn't worth much to them anymore. And this is where batteries come in. Store your own excess solar power during the day and then use it later when it matters most while retaining that full value. And on the same topic, while utilities are reducing their payouts on excess solar generation, the rise of virtual power plants, VPPs, is starting to change the game. These programs allow your home battery to participate with the grid, essentially acting like a small power plant. And in return, you get paid a premium for sharing your stored energy when the grid needs it most. Here's how it works. During times of high demand, like summer evenings or during a heat wave, utilities can tap into hundreds or even thousands of home batteries simultaneously to help stabilize the grid. Instead of utilities having to fire up expensive and dirty peaker power plants, they pull clean energy from your battery system, and this approach is gaining momentum across the country. In states like Arizona, California, Texas, Vermont, and Massachusetts, 
homeowners are now earning real money, often hundreds or even thousands of dollars per year for allowing a portion of their battery to support the grid during these events. This adds a powerful new layer of value, helps increase your savings, shorten your payback period, and unlock benefits that solar alone simply can't provide. Do me a huge favor, if you are getting any value from today's video, drop me a quick thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content like this. The last shift we're seeing from utility providers, time of use rates. Utilities across the country are moving away from flat rate billing and transitioning towards time of use pricing, where your electricity costs change depending on the time of day. During the daytime, when solar generation is high and demand is low, energy rates are typically cheap. This is called off-peak or even super off-peak, which is like happy hour for the grid. But in the late afternoon and evening, when solar ramps down and demand spikes, rates can skyrocket. And this is called peak time, which is like rush hour for the grid. For example, APS, a large utility provider here in Arizona, will offer energy at just three and a half cents per kilowatt hour from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. in the winter months. But from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. on that same exact rate plan, the cost of energy is nearly 10 times more expensive. And why is this? Supply and demand. Utilities will try to control your habits with their price structure to either encourage or discourage energy use at certain times of day. Why would anyone knowingly pre-cool their house, run their pool pump, or charge their EV at 35 cents a kilowatt hour when they could do it for three and a half? A rate plan like this is where batteries can really save a lot of money. Generate your solar energy, store the excess, and then not only use it later, but use it when the rates are at their highest price point. Solar on its own is a fairly inflexible power source when it comes to timing, but when paired with batteries, your system becomes extremely adaptable. It can adjust to these changing rates in real time, helping you get the most value from your energy every single day. Now, we haven't even talked about the battery systems themselves, and that brings us to point number three. For batteries to keep gaining traction, they need to be better, more affordable, and easier to install. And we're seeing major strides in all three areas. A big driver here is the shift towards all-in-one ecosystems. It's no longer just about the battery. It's the hardware, the installation method, and the software all working together. This change is accomplishing three things. It creates a better product, it simplifies the installation, and it reduces the overall project cost. Here's just one example of this. Homeowners already need an inverter system when going solar. That cost is baked in, but now that same inverter can serve dual purposes. It can power both the solar and the battery system, so you can kind of think of it like a two-way inverter setup. So now we're seeing a boom in these DC-coupled systems led by Tesla's Powerwall 3, but also followed by SolarEdge, EP Cube, Point Guard, EG4, and soon Franklin with their upcoming A Power S. Basically, we're installing a solar inverter just like we always have, but it just so happens to have energy storage built in. I don't mention Enphase here because they are all about AC coupling, so it's a little bit different. However, they do a really good job of being in this all in one solution where they supply the inverter, the battery, and the entire energy management system. If you want to learn the differences between AC and DC coupled systems, check out out a video I did comparing the two in the description below. This movement towards system integration is streamlining everything. Tesla's Powerwall 3 paired with their backup switch really set the tone, and that's a big reason why they now hold over 50% of the residential battery market. The backup switch is Tesla's meter caller solution, and the success from this has really sparked a trend. Now, Enphase has their own meter caller solution, Franklin is developing theirs, and many other manufacturers are following suit. But why does something like this actually matter to the homeowner? It's simple. When you get a proposal from an installer for a solar and a battery system, it's not just for the panels, inverters, and the batteries. It's for everything, including profit. And devices like Tesla's backup switch allow for whole home backup using your home's existing electrical panel. And a solution like this helps reduce the time, the parts, and the labor needed to install a backup battery solution. We're talking fewer boxes, fewer sub panels, less breakers, an easier scope of work, and a smaller footprint overall. And beyond the hardware, today's battery systems feature smarter software, real-time monitoring, and flexible system control. Much like electric vehicles, batteries are software-based, which means the experience gets better over time with a simple software or firmware update. What if your utility company changes your time of use rates? You can quickly update them right there on your system's app to ensure you're maximizing savings. What about if a new VPP program launches in your area? 
enroll directly from your system software to get paid a premium for your battery's energy. What if there's severe weather on the horizon and you're worried about a power outage? Just increase your backup reserve in your system's app and the battery will prioritize storing energy accordingly. This is the kind of long-term flexibility that we're talking about. The software layer is what protects you from obsolescence and this is something that a standalone solar system can't do. Even my own three-year-old Powerwall 2 continues to receive updates that keep it nearly on par with the latest Powerwall 3 installations. Please keep in mind as well, all of this information today can vary from consumer to consumer based on your goals, your home setup, and your utility provider. If you want to see a head-to-head -head of two of the best battery systems here in 2025, go ahead and check out this video here on the screen. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more, and I will talk to you guys next time.